Since the festive month is officially upon us, this video explores ITV's feature-length 2000 retelling of Charles Dickens's eternally adapted novella, A Christmas Carol. As with the source material and most other iterations, one Christmas Eve, miserly misanthropic Londoner Scrooge encounters the ghosts of Christmas past, present and future, and thanks to their efforts, mends his ways. Oh, sorry, spoilers. In this production, Scrooge's deceased business partner, former significant other, well-meaning, often dismissed nephew, and long-suffering employee with a sickly child are also present as usual. Those are multiple characters, by the way. This version does not combine Scrooge's dead business partner, his nephew, his ex-girlfriend, his employee, and that employee's sickly child into one character. That would be daring, to say the least. This film's authentic, accessible dialogue complements capable performances. Ross Kemp, who famously appeared in a famous British TV series alongside Sean Williamson, the title of which begins with an E and ends with an S. I'm talking, of course, about extras. What other show could I have possibly been talking about? Oh yeah, that one. In this Christmas Carol, Kemp introduces a suitably smug malevolence and, crucially, a gradual, legitimate sensitivity to Scrooge, in spite of the arguably novel casting choice. Ray Fearon, who also appeared in the previously reviewed BBC dark comedy Fleabag, provides dry comic timing, confidence, and an under lion tragedy to Jacob Marley's ghost, while Michael Maloney, who also appeared in, um, other things probably, brings a convincing sensitivity and depth to Bob Cratchit. The supporting cast, which includes among others, Daniel Ainsley, Angeline Ball, Warren Mitchell and Liz Smith, likewise successfully fill their respective roles. Interestingly, certain bold beneficial changes are made to Dickens' story in this rendition. The modern setting emphasises the story's timeless nature, the ghosts of people more clearly associated with Scrooge, for example the ghost of Christmas past is his late father, the most radical idea introduced, however, is that in a plot point reminiscent of Groundhog Day, in between ghostly visitations, Scrooge is forced to repeatedly relive the same day until his lesson is officially learned. It is ironic that the modernised Christmas Carol retelling starring Bill Murray isn't the one that includes a Groundhog Day style time loop. This addition to the narrative allows Scrooge to change more gradually, and for the conclusion where he's finally mended his ways, sorry, spoilers, to feel more earned. The original novella's messages of generosity and empathy are highlighted in the process. Thanks to the calculated creative writing of Peter Bowker, a certain level of uniqueness, which is necessary when adapting such a frequently told tale, is impeccably balanced, with a degree of faithfulness to the source material. Avoiding the potential pitfalls of either, following the novella so militantly, any originality is severely limited, or the opposite problem of deviating in so confusingly and wildly from Dickens' original ghost story that the spirit <laughs> of the original becomes completely lost in translation. Hey, that's another Bill Murray film. While successfully balancing originality with faithfulness, Bowker also successfully balances effective, purposeful, dark subject matter with appropriate, genuine warmth. Another noteworthy detail is that this version features the Raggy Dolls theme tune, since the show has been watched by minor characters in one scene. And about time too, that chapter in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, where a group of minor characters watch the Raggy Dolls, is such a crucial crucial passage that so many adaptations don't include solely because it was never actually included in the Charles Dickens novella, solely because TV and the Raggy Dolls and the Raggy Dolls theme song didn't actually exist in Charles Dickens' lifetime. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh, I didn't mention that Vinnie Jones plays Fezziwig in this version, did I? And the reason I didn't mention that is because it's not true. One slight issue, apart from the absence of Vinnie Jones, obviously, is that Scrooge is reinvented as a loan shark, a more criminal role than usual. Any potential of Scrooge becoming unsympathetic or irredeemable as a result of this change is thankfully averted by the script establishing that he's a fairly benign example of a loan shark and is never shown resort into any serious violence. Another slight personal misgiving is that a romantic subplot is introduced, which despite holding some basis in Dickens' text, and despite enabling a minor yet striking plot twist, this facet of the story seems significantly less interesting than the rest of the feature. In conclusion, while The Muppet Christmas Carol will remain my favourite version, and while I would rather die than change my stance on that matter, and if I'd rather die I'd better do it and decrease the surplus population 
speculation. This 2000 ITV produced title, nevertheless, proves to be an incredibly worthy addition to the endless, ever-growing list of Christmas Carol adaptations. Being gripping, creative, moving and respectful. Thanks for watching and if I don't see you next time I can only hope that your chosen Christmas Carol adaptations will cause Scrooge's journey of redemption, sorry spoilers, to resonate with you. Or that your chosen Raggy Dolls episode will cause their journey of self-acceptance to resonate with you. Since, just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Don't be scared if you don't fit in. Look who's in the reject bin. It's the Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Made him perfectly. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Are happy just to be. Raggy Dolls. Dolls like you and me. P.S. Michael Maloney appeared in Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet, Kenneth Branagh's In the Bleak Midwinter, and several other things.